Matt here with Mobile Solar in Stewart, Florida. We're a distributor and installer of Victron's products, and today we're gonna to show you a beginner's guide on how to use your Victron system most efficiently from a customer standpoint. So we're gonna give you three very simple tips that anybody should know, and then two more in-depth, more technical tips for those who wanna dive a little deeper. Tip number one is to make sure you turn your inverter off when you're not using it. So your inverter, even if you have nothing plugged in, if it's just sitting there at idle, it will use a good amount of energy, about 30 watts, and over a course of time, like a whole day, that's really gonna start to add up. So you make sure you turn it off. The best way to do this is to use the touch screen. So you'll double click where it says inverter on your overview page, and then on mode, where it's set to on, you can click on that, set it to off, and click set. Now the inverter's off, and conveniently, tip number two is to adjust your grid current limit to the same as the breaker size. So if you're at a friend's house and you're plugging into an outlet on the outside of their house, that's probably a 15 amp breaker. So you can adjust the grid current limit to 15 amps, which is what I have it set to now. If you're pulling up to a campground and you're not sure if they have a 30 or a 50 amp breaker, you can first look at the breaker and then once you know the size, you can come here and select the size and click set. So adjusting the current limit helps you not pop the breaker at the source. So if you forget, it's probably not the end of the world, you might just have to go and flip the breaker back on after changing your current limit. Another thing to keep in mind is that you use a properly rated extension cord. So when you're plugging in a big system like this, like a full size trailer, you don't wanna use an extension cord that's rated to handle one or two light bulbs. You wanna make sure you use a 10 gauge or a 12 gauge extension cord. A 10 gauge cord would be required if you've got over 50 feet of cord and a 12 gauge cord should work fine if it's 50 feet or less. Tip number three is to never leave your batteries empty. So that is the number one way to kill your lithium batteries is to drain them to empty and then leave them there unattended for not being charged for months. They're going to be damaged beyond repair. So the best way to avoid that damage is to number one, you could just leave your batteries out in the sun. Number two, you could leave them plugged into shore power. Or number three, you can charge them up at least 50% and then physically disconnect them. So hopefully you've got a disconnect switch like this that you could just turn off. And if not, you could have to, you know, disconnect the wires from the batteries. So that's important to do anytime you're putting your RV in storage, whether that's for a couple of days or a couple of months. A more advanced, less known about tip is the second AC output on the MultiPlus. So every MultiPlus has one. They're in different locations on different models, but that second output allows you to program when a certain appliance runs and when it doesn't. So for example, maybe you've got your hot water heater running on electricity. You don't want that to drain your batteries down because it's not that important. You could just switch it over to propane. But if you've got extra energy and there's solar coming in, why not, right? So maybe you program using the assistant tab on VE config, you program that output to turn on only when your batteries are above a certain voltage and then you wire your hot water heater directly into there. Another advanced tip is to use the virtual switch feature within VE config to actually tell your MultiPlus to ignore shore power. And you'd wanna do this just to save on your electricity bill. If you're being billed by the kilowatt hour and your batteries are full and there's solar coming in, why would you need grid? So let's tell the MultiPlus when we want it to ignore grid. And this is a pretty detailed uh, thing to do. So we actually have already filmed a guide on this topic. Feel free to watch it here.